Thank you, John, once again for coming on. It's a pleasure to have you here. And today we're going to focus a lot around dating. And so from the um, viewers' questions that I've had from the last time we had you on, which was a real success, uh, one of the first questions that I've got for you today um, from one of our viewers is, what can I as a woman do to stand out when I'm on a date with a man? Okay, how to stand out. Yeah, uh, and, and get to that, get to that second date, hopefully get to that third date and make him want to want to pursue you and take it further. The most refreshing thing for a man is a woman who feels comfortable with herself. And part of one of the symptoms of not being comfortable with yourself is uh, trying to adjust yourself to please someone. You know, women so much want to make a good impression by being pleasing. Because if a man is pleasing, a woman is, oh, oh, he cares about me. And that's very important. But when women try to please a man too much, it's a big turnoff. You want to let a man please you. But at the same time, to be authentic is to not, when he's talking about, when you're talking about something, don't adjust what you say in order to please him. That's very important because a natural tendency is that, you know, when your heart is open, uh, we want to be people pleasers. And I remember when I was 18 and I was with a group of people and they were kind of the in crowd and I wanted to be accepted, wanted to be liked. Somebody said, did you see that movie, a particular movie? And it was a bit controversial movie. And I remember going, uh oh. What if I what if I liked it and they didn't like it? What if they didn't like it and I like it? You know how how would how would that come across? So immediately I was thinking, what's the best answer, rather than my real answer? Mm -hmm. Now, however, having said that, there is one adjustment we all need to make, which mm -hmm. is if our answer to a question or responding to someone's comment is we're trying to adjust them, argue with them, or change them then it's not accepted. It's a, it's a very refreshing experience to be with somebody who can hear your point of view and, and then you don't try to change that person, but you have a different point of view. So yeah. the way you do that is with buffer statements. A man says something like, I think this and this and this, and you go, oh, that makes sense. And then you say something about what he said. Uh, it could be that, oh, that makes sense. I have a completely different different way of looking at it. And actually, the more you have differences, the more attractive you'll be, which is the mm -hmm. opposite of what people think. Yeah. And certainly, we if you want to be with the right person for you, you have to like them. They have to mm -hmm. like you. That means you have many things in common. But yes. attraction happens from differences. You know, a, a relationship needs to be a certain amount of uh, uh, natural affinity towards someone. I really like you. I like being with you. But the attraction is going to be produced when you're somehow different. Now, there, naturally, because men and women are different, there's a natural attraction. But if you yeah. adjust yourself too much to please someone, you're no longer present. And so they can't be attracted to you. They might like, you know, everybody likes compliments. Everybody likes people to agree with you. But what you do is you master the art of validating someone's point of view, but having a different point of view is often people are afraid of that when actually it's very, very refreshing if the person who disagrees with me is not trying to change me or upset with me. Uh, maybe I said, I remember being with a woman and I said I was, uh, had just gone to Saudi Arabia to teach my seminars. And she went, well, what'd you think? I said, well, I had a wonderful time. It was amazing to me. I went to a restaurant under the sky and there was like a thousand people there and nobody was on their cell phone. They were all relating. Wow. It was really refreshing to have people actually in relationship and having a good time. Families were all present. Mm -hmm. And she was a, a very sort of radical feminist. You know, we all want, I certainly want equality for men and women, but the radical feminists often you know, make men wrong and make countries bad and focus on negativity. Yeah. And yes, it's useful to see what doesn't work in the world, but to get all riled up about it. So when I said, oh, I found it very pleasing. She went, what? How could you find that pleasing? I can't believe that you, how you understand how terrible they are and how that's awful what they do to women and everything. 
And I said, well, I agree with that. You know, every country is making progress. You know, you have to recognize the steps of progress. And she just got so upset and it all, it made me never want to talk to her again, to have somebody trying to tell me I have to think a certain way, I have to feel a certain way, mm -hmm. as opposed to curiosity, be curious. And that's so wonderful as opposed to being upset with someone for the way they think. So yeah. that's a wonderful tip for dating for women. Thank you. Um, one of the things I love that I heard you say before um, was actually about when we might go out with our girlfriends and we'll go to a restaurant mm -hmm. and there'll be something that we don't like and we talk about that particular thing and we all get along, we all talk about it, we all agree that that particular food was something we didn't like. But when we're with a guy, how, how does that make him feel if, if we do that when we're on a date? And well, that, we, another... we criticize or complain about where we've been taken or what's been served to us. <laughs> well, that's clearly in my book, Mars Venus on a Date. It's such mm -hmm. a, a fun thing because women often bond by complaining about something. It's not that women are complaining all the time, but it's nice to feel, oh, you have the same experience with me. This soup is really too cold mm -hmm. and this restaurant's <laughs> so expensive. They should have better <laughs> soup at least or the service is so mm -hmm. slow. And then your partner, your friend, your girlfriend was like, yes, yes, it's terrible. I cannot believe it. You know, and now you have this sort of uh, secret club in a sense. That's intimacy, a see inside of me, come inside of my world and experience it. And that's so natural for women to do. And it's often a way, you know, to bond. It's a bonding way, you know, sharing an experience. And you can bond also with positive experiences, but actually biologically we bond more when we have someone, we're talking about something negative and we feel mm -hmm. safe to share it. That actually stimulates more memory and more bonding for wow. women. Now for men, it, we, we, we have the opposite experience of when we're on a date and she's wanting to connect with me and maybe the soup is cold and, she's, and it should be hot. She says, oh, this soup, I can't believe it. It's, 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 uh, so cold, they didn't even heat it up. Or she might say, oh, this is so expensive. I can't believe that it's so expensive. And in her mind, she's just sharing her feelings. But to a man, particularly, actually, I was about to say, particularly on a date, but actually anytime, uh, anytime with my wife, you know, I go into a restaurant, she looks at the menu and said, oh, this is too expensive. You know, it's kind of like, oh, I made a mistake to take you here. Men, men have a greater need to feel successful on a date, just as women have a greater need to feel he is successful. So she'll go, he did this, he did this, he did this, he had good manners, he looked this way, you know, he demonstrated a respect for me. See, that's what increases the attraction for a woman to a man, and what a man does for her, for a way a man provides for her, the, the, the attitude he has in terms of making it safe for her to be herself, oh, she'll bond very powerfully. We can even measure the bonding hormone in that woman when she feels safe, her estrogen will go up. When women are happy, their estrogen goes up. When women are falling in love, it doubles. It becomes like 20 times higher than a man's. Uh, wow. So this is, you know, this is, nobody's really done the research on when she falls in love, it's 20 times higher. They've done the research that when she has an orgasm, it's 20 times higher. So that's when you're in the presence of a man and you feel like you want to have an orgasm, he's going to bond with you big time because the research shows that when women's estrogen goes up, men's testosterone goes up and wow. men, their testosterone goes up. Of course, that creates libido, that creates interest, that creates focus. When his testosterone up, he doesn't whine or complain. He shows more interest. He's more dedicated. All these qualities happen when men feel successful. So when, when he takes you to a restaurant, if you're not complaining about the restaurant, then he's going to feel successful. And you mm -hmm. may unknowingly be sabotaging that because you can just smile and enjoy. And, you know, if you want to say, well, the soup wasn't my favorite, not a big deal. Not a big deal is a very, very powerful phrase. It's a million dollar phrase. If you want to express a complaint to a man and share, oh, I didn't really like this at all. You just say, you know, it's not really a big deal, but I think, you know, they, they ought to serve the soup hotter, you know, or I think this, uh, the colors in this restaurant are kind of off, but it's not a big deal because look, we have this and this and this. Now, some women may be hearing this and think, oh, I have to be so particular with a man. Well, doesn't he have to be respectful and particular of you? 
like not get angry with you, not tell you about your weight, not tell you about how you look. <laughs> he may be thinking things, but you don't say everything you think. And that's really, really important. And, you know, and women often want to know what's he thinking? What's he thinking? Quite often, he's not thinking anything. That's another <laughs> thing to realize is that men don't naturally uh, demonstrate uh, a reassuring facial gesture when they're listening to you. Sometimes it's scary to show yourself with a man because if he's focusing, his facial gestures don't change, you know, because he's busy thinking. Whereas if you watch two women having lunch together, they're all over the place, you know, they're, oh, oh their face is full of expression, whatever. Kind of like two guys watching a football game. That's when men get all emotionally <laughs> expressive. <laughs> but on a date, yeah. maybe he's not so expressive. It doesn't mean he's emotionally unavailable. But what you can do is when you're having a conversation and he's pondering what, what you're thinking, for many men to ponder and think about what you said, we stop feeling emotion. We actually detach in that moment. And a man could be angry, he'll detach. A man could be interested and he'll detach. A man could actually mm -hmm. care about you and detach. Detachment is a very wonderful quality of, of testosterone when he feels successful. And sometimes women, they don't know how to read it. And so when mm -hmm. you're talking and a guy wanders off, you know, that feeling where he disconnects, you, you don't feel reassured that he's with you. You can say, you can just pause, just pause. And that will get his attention, by the way, is pause and just say, you're thinking about that, aren't you? And he'll <laughs> say, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And now he's connected to you again. This is very yeah. subtle things that you can do. But just something that's not in a woman's awareness is that men tend to be a lot more sensitive to any complaints you have about what has happened on a date. Mm -hmm. You might be thinking, oh, I'm not complaining about him. It's the restaurant or it's the weather or that movie had a terrible ending. You know, yeah. focusing on those things actually sort of defeats that feeling inside of a man of I provided this amazing experience for you, mm -hmm. which is what he wants to have. And I remember, uh, you know, just as a story to help land this point, I went to see I think it was called the Joy Luck Club, something like that. It was a woman's chick flick and mostly women were going. And uh, when I, I went with my wife uh, and as we're leaving the restaurant, I watched this woman and she was standing there. And this is a couple that was, you know, like probably 75, I'd say. The guy was probably 75, 80. And, you know, he's obviously his wife has died or passed and he's dating again. You know, it's like dating again when you're older. It's like you're a teenager, you know, and it's very unfamiliar. And so he was sitting there and he's feeling a little insecure. And I just listened in on their conversation and I heard his tone of voice. I felt so sorry for him. He said, so what would you like to do now? He was like beaten down because clearly she didn't oh. like that movie. So what would you like to do now? And she said, you know what I like to do? I like to stand here and tell every single person coming oh. to this movie what a waste of time it is, how terrible that movie is, completely insulting to me. Oh. <laughs> I, just, I, I watched this poor guy just shrink down. Oh my gosh, I'm a failure. And you know, and these are just the subtleties. And you know, anybody who's looked at my work and my most recent book, Beyond Mars and Venus, these are all my other books, but I talk about how hormones are so important for determining our feeling of connection. And mm -hmm. whenever, whenever a man or a woman is experiencing success, like, oh, look what I provided for you, uh, their testosterone will go up. And when uh, you feel someone is providing something for you, respecting you, uh, validating you, there for you, your estrogen levels go up. And mm -hmm. it turns out that women need 10 times more estrogen than men. And women need 20 times more estrogen to really open up their heart, which is what happens in an orgasm. And that's of course, when you bond with a man and fall in love with him more deeply. Now, the flip side of this is for men to have that strong, long lasting erection. He needs a lot of testosterone. He needs to feel very successful. He also needs to be mm -hmm. somewhat in shape. The bottom line for men is you need to focus on, you are the source of your happiness by what you do the success you have in your life. It doesn't have to be money or whatever. How are yes. you contributing to the well-being of people other than your partner? So then you're only looking to her not to become happy, but to be happier by yes. providing her what she would enjoy, what she would like, and what she needs. These are like really important insights because often when men tend to pull away, women want to pursue and be nicer and give more and whatever. And you train a man to give you less whenever you give him more. Instead, you want equality. Mm -hmm. 
You want to you want to hold back from giving so much until he receives. For those women who who basically they say they're givers, I translate it into oh, I know your problems because you're you're not a very good receiver. <laughs> that what a man wants <laughs> most is a receiver, not a giver. What a yeah. woman wants most is a man who's a giver, not a receiver. So you have to like change your thinking around when you're dating a man. Mm -hmm. And I, I like that point. And it brings me to the, one of the next questions I had, which was um, from a successful woman's point of view or a woman who um, maybe classify themselves as a more dominant woman, then what is it that they need? Like a woman who's really self-sufficient, she can do it all of herself. What is it that she really needs from man? And in that point itself, we've sort of made that point where what we need as a woman is to receive and what men need is to be able to give and then feel successful in giving. Yes, so, so nicely yeah. pointed out. And I'll, I'll give a few examples to sort of bring that point in, yes. which is I remember, because you know when I talk about men and women are different, I'm not saying that women don't relate to some of the male things and men don't relate to some of the female things. We all have a male and female side. We have male energy and feminine energy inside of us, masculine, feminine energy. And in my books, I identify there's the male side, the female side. And more, more often than not today, if you were to read my, my famous book, Men Are From Mars, many women who are independent will say, I relate more to being a man. And they'll often say, and my husband, he's more like a woman. Uh, now the men won't say I'm more like a woman. <laughs> That's what women are like proud of me. I'm strong like a man, you know, my husband, he's, he's more like a woman. He relates to, you know, he wants to talk a lot and share his emotions. He complains a lot here, you know, sounds like he is the, the woman in the relationship. That's called role reversal. And uh, it's happening more and more today. When you talk about the successful woman, it's not just the successful woman who's more on her masculine side. It's the independent woman. It's the woman who's not in relationship. When you're yes. not in relationship, you're more independent. And independent is a good thing. No, nothing wrong with that. It's not a good thing if you don't have support in your life to raise up your estrogen levels. So it's a good question. What do I need from a man? And some women are so just, aver I don't need a man at all. Okay, that means your estrogen is gonna be pretty low if you're one of those women. So let me explain why you need a man. You need a man because there's certain things you want. That seems to be more comfortable for women to admit I want. So why you, why you need a man is because I want companionship. Why do you need a man? Because I don't wanna to go to the movies alone. Why do you need a man? Because I want to have a sense of security that I have backup if I need mm -hmm. help. Uh, mm -hmm. Why do you need a man is I'm tired of eating alone and I'd mm -hmm. like some friendship while I'm having dinner. So that's why you need a man is because you have all these wishes and wants. And of mm -hmm. course, don't leave out yeah. why you need a man is because I want to, I want to have great sex. You know, I want to be in a relationship where I don't have to do everything myself. Mm -hmm. I want to be in a relationship where I can get, help when I need help because my life, I'm so independent. I don't even know what I need because I'm so burnt out. I'll just be a little extreme here. I'm so burnt out on depending on someone who's not been there. So many women say they don't even know if they want to be in a relationship. It's like having another mm -hmm. child. And what I would say is I understand men are lazy. Men, men say they'll do stuff and they forget it because men don't know the relationship skills that are re relevant to women today when they're more independent. You see, when I grew up, yeah. my parents were very happy uh, and they didn't have different requirements. In, in the 50s, when I grew up, what was a man was supposed to do to have a good relationship? Make money, that was it. Have some <laughs> decent manners. And you know, women didn't complain, oh, we have no communication. My husband's not romantic. Everybody <laughs> knew that the honeymoon period, the honeymoon period would happen. It would be over and happy women were women who knew how to be happy. Uh, they're often uh, religious women actually were the happiest in my wow. experience of women. And why that was is because they had a strong spiritual belief. You don't have to be religious, by the way, to have a strong spiritual belief. But back then, usually it was the religious people who had a strong spiritual belief that they're not alone. 
You see, when yes. you pray, if every yes. day you're praying, you feel that, okay, Good there's connection. invisible, somebody is helping me out here. So <laughs> yeah. you, weren't, you weren't looking to this uh, man, but people, so many atheists today or people are disconnected from spirituality. That's mm -hmm. a big blow to estrogen, a big blow. And then mm -hmm. there's the being independent where you feel I've got to do it all myself. That's big testosterone production. Nothing wrong with testosterone production for a woman. It's just that when you're uh, doing those activities like risk, danger, urgency, yes. rushing, responsibility, pressure, all of that is testosterone producing. And that mm -hmm. actually lowers stress for men if they have confidence. That's why men need role models. They need training. And unfortunately, no man has trained. No man has training on how do you how do you support a woman in a relationship today? And and they're not re necessarily reading my books because they're reading the old fashioned relationship books. You know what those are? How to make money. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah how to, to make money. How to make more money. How to make yeah. more money. That's a man, that's a man's relationship book. No. That, that that's that's <laughs> so. And, and many, many of the relationship books, unfortunately, uh, just look at it from the female point of view. And, and that's a good point of view. They don't look at it and teach women how to communicate a man so he, with a man so he'll listen, how to ask for help so a man will do more for you, how to practice not over giving, but become a better receiver, uh, how to be orgasmic, understand how powerful it is for a woman to desire sex. I want to have sex. What gets in the way of lasting sexual passion in a relationship? Because this has never been taught before. If we look historically, everybody thought that there was a romantic period and then sex became kind of routine. And it was pretty much something a woman did for a man. Yes. Today, men want to do it for women. And, and women go, well, why doesn't he do it that way? Because he doesn't know. He doesn't know the dynamics of foreplay, of building up energy. He walks around looking for a release. She needs to build up the sexual tension so then it will release and how to do that. So they, there's so much more uh, that we need to learn if we really want to be fulfilled in relationship. And if you want to be fulfilled in life, I'd say for most people, the most powerful way is to have a loving relationship. But wow. love is not enough. The, the love can be there, but the clouds will come and block the sunshine if we don't have these good skills. And women can actually train a man. We're kind of like dogs. Most men are not offended <laughs> when I say that. Reward us and we'll do more. Feed us, you know, come pet us and forget us. Ignore us. <laughs> and what one tip is when, when, a, when a, a man, when a dog is jumping up on you, the way you train the dog not to jump up on you is you ignore it. You just turn around and then you come back and you say, sit and you give them a treat. Mm -hmm. You always want to ask and reward, ask and reward. Oh. Another thing I learned in dog obedience training, actually my wife learned the most because uh, she realized she could apply some of those ideas to me. <laughs> if we had a dog and the dog would never come when you say, come, come. Dog didn't seem to understand mm -hmm. or, or didn't want to do it. And would never come until after a while, come, come, come. And finally the dog would come. Mm. And then, then Bonnie would say, bad dog, bad dog. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the trainer said, no, when the dog comes, you don't say bad dog. <laughs> so whenever a man does the right thing, oh, that was really great. And when they do the wrong things, ignore it. Don't give it energy. That's yeah. a, such powerful words. So what are the three words that will always come in handy, women, when a guy says something, these are these buffers that before you say what you disagree with or whatever, you can say, always say things like, that makes sense. Or what a good idea, I hadn't thought of that. Uh, another one is, you're right. Another <laughs> one, if you really have an open heart, you can go, oh, I'm so happy you're here, my hero. And some women are like, oh, oh, I can't, can't handle that. Can't. But that's what men want. See, that, that's what they want is some woman who looks up to him like he's amazing. And, and, and that's another dynamic, literally looking up. You'll see this, this was bad news for me. I didn't realize it as a kid, I took it personally. But when I, when I, I was gonna create a Mars Venus dating site at one point and I was yeah. reading through all the requirements and literally every woman wanted a man who was six, nine or above. I'm wow. sorry, five, five, nine, <laughs> five, nine or above. And I'm like five, seven and a half, you know? <laughs> I'm not even on the radar. 
uh, uh, <laughs> of course, if you're successful in whatever, you get on the radar. But I didn't even know that. It was like a shock to me. Wow, they all want somebody two inches taller than me. No wonder. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So our reward for a man is that um, appreciation and making him feel like what he's provided has been um, uh, really appreciated and loved by us. That is that reward that we talk about here, isn't it? That's, a, that's the, the bottom line of it all. One of the most important skills for men to learn and women can train them, and that is to be a good listener. It turns yes. out that when women are on their male side, they're more independent. Yes. One of the most, that means they're making more testosterone and not enough estrogen. All right. So we want to how to increase the estrogen levels in her body. If a woman feels safe to take off her clothes, for example, but emotional clothes, you see, we all have these emotional coverings. We don't tell everybody what we're feeling because actually, if you revealed all your feelings, people would think you're so selfish. You're a little crazy. Like, why are you making such a big deal about these things? And some women have, yeah. are so afraid of revealing it, they don't even know it's there. But we have to recognize that Freud explained all this. And, and he explained that basically, anytime you're upset, you're overreacting. Yeah. I have to yeah. put it in. Now, that's politically incorrect because men you misuse that information by when a woman was talking upset about something, he thought he was being comforting. And when he said, you're just overreacting. So men, you can't use that phrase on a woman, but yeah. we should all recognize that anytime you're upset, you're overreacting. Yes. You're overreacting. And people can just get this. It's not just Freud who pointed that out. It is, it's Buddha taught that. <laughs> Basically, no reason, be bliss, be happy, be fulfilled. You know, the sun is always shining. It's just that, <laughs> There's clouds in front of it. And even when the sun sets, it's gonna rise the next day. It's still out there. It didn't go anywhere. Where are the ones who are going somewhere? It's such a great metaphor. It's mm -hmm. like when we're not feeling happy, it's something going on inside of us. And we, we, we don't have enough intelligence because this, auto, this stress reaction happens at that time. And so we always blame somebody else for how we feel. But the most comforting thing, again, on a date or whatever, for a woman to be apologetic. You know, just as women want men to say, oh, I'm so sorry, I forgot, I didn't do that right. We want to hear that as well. And we want to hear it more. Now, you don't have to do it. I'm just telling you the, the secret. Oh, my gosh, I made a mistake. I didn't realize that. If you, if you say those kinds of things, what a man will feel is I don't have to be perfect to be loved human. by you. It's like this is another human relating that if we make a mistake. It's okay. Yes, yes. And just yes. as women... You know, women, they want to hear men say, I apologize. And it is no doubt about it. Men, men, uh, men do stop saying they're sorry for things. And maybe after they've been in a few relationships, they're in a relationship with you, they stopped. And it's not a sign of narcissism <laughs> that he doesn't apologize. He doesn't. Some narcissists don't. Okay, there are some narcissists that don't. But a large portion of men, after they've been in a few relationships, they stop saying, I'm sorry. And the reason they don't say it is because <laughs> they don't understand women. Because if a woman is upset, he, 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 if he doesn't understand women are different. If I'm with a, two men together, we're arguing about something and I say, my bad, I'm sorry, it's over. Okay, yeah. that's it. We don't hold on to it. It's like, mm -hmm. all we want to do is be right. And if I'm wrong, then you're right. So if I want to make peace with a man, like, okay, I get it. You're right. I, I made a big mm -hmm. mistake. My bad, my mistake. So sorry. Another guy, when you say that, he feels like, oh, I'm right. And that raises his testosterone. And now there's no tension. Yeah. Now, even when I say raises testosterone, no tension, most people have the misunderstanding that it's testosterone that causes men to become aggressive. It's actually lowering testosterone that causes men to be aggressive and hiring estrogen. So when a man's estrogen is too high and his testosterone goes down, that's when they get aggressive. That's when they're angry. This is like all backwards what people think is true because we didn't know all this stuff. Now we have the research to back it all up. It's amazing knowledge. Nobody's applied it to relationships yet. <laughs> Although we do know, you'll see it all the commercials that, you know, men take Viagra to get an erection. You know, a third of American men take Viagra to get an erection. I can't even get mine down. I have sex every day at 70 years old. <laughs> Why? Because I have relationship skills and my partner has relationship skills. These are like really important elements to have. But 
I, I was making another point there. Once I start talking about erections, my mind stops. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what were we just talking about? Uh, we were just talking about how important it is for um, when we think that um, testosterone is what's making him aggressive and it's actually the opposite of that and how everything is so backwards, but it's the skills that we can have that oh, are going to, yeah, there's keep, no, keep us. There's nothing more powerful to produce testosterone than a, in a man than a woman's smile. Okay, this, this is like really powerful. And what I was talking about a minute when I got a little distracted was apologies. Women are always explaining, men don't apologize. And I was explaining that why men stop apologizing is they don't understand women. Because if you apologize to a man, I say, oh, my mistake, my bad, I'm so sorry. That's done, the conversation's over. But with a woman, when you say, oh, I'm sorry, my bad, the conversation begins. Okay, now she wants <laughs> to tell you how she feels. <laughs> like, wait a second. This doesn't work. If I apologize, then she tells me more what I did that's wrong as opposed to letting it go and just forgetting it. But see, women have a different stress uh, response. Okay, when they're experiencing stress, what happens is there's eight, compared to a man, there's eight times more blood flow to the hippocampus. The hippocampus yes. is the memory and emotional memory of the brain for a woman. Mm -hmm. So she's gonna suddenly have this surge of estrogen when she feels safe. Uh, and that, to express what's in there. So suddenly, you know, he says, I'm sorry. That means I'm safe to express what I feel. And what I feel is going to be eight times more. And I need to express it. This is why when women are stressed, don't talk to a man because he'll feel blamed. When you're stressed, talk to another woman who will understand, validate you. Your estrogen levels will go up. And now you'll be in present time and you won't be overreacting. Wow. You can go to your partner from a place of love and positivity. And there's certainly problems. Let's discuss what happened and let's look at this. Let, let me tell you what would really work for me. But this, this is complicated stuff. You know, people just want to throw themselves out there and think I can express myself and I should be lovable just the way I am. No way. If you express who you truly are, which is a loving human being, you can say anything yeah. and it will work. You know, I do have all these sort of scripts that I give people and, and it can be kind of tedious uh, and, and you don't always have to follow the script. And the truth is in the freshness of a relationship, when people don't have a history together of being hurt or being judged or being corrected or being criticized or being the object of complaint, if you don't have any of that, you can say anything you want because there's no, there's no history. But once the history sets in, and people, by the time they get to dating, they might have had a few relationships or whatever. They might be more defensive or maybe they grew up yes. with parents who, who made them wrong all the time. You know, you have to change to get my love. You have to right. change to get my love. So you got to be better. You got to be perfect. Yeah. So these people are going to be more sensitive. Doesn't mean they're not lovable. Doesn't mean that you can't have a great relationship with them. Because what I found is that your partner having issues means that you have to adjust how you communicate effectively mm -hmm. to be heard. And actually the process of adjusting how you communicate to be heard makes you a civilized, more wonderful, loving person. I wanna give an example of how to ask for support and get it in a relationship. So in my own marriage with Bonnie of 34 years, now she's passed now, uh, but I talk about her in present time. She's still in my heart, yeah. always there. And so one of her complaints about me is I would leave the light on in the living room. And I, it's not like I sat in the living room and then left. You know, I have to walk through the living room to get to the TV room or the kitchen or from the bedroom, from a guest room. So it's the middle of the house. So I'd walk through down hallways, turning on and off switches. And then I many times forget to do it. All right. So then she would in the beginning, it was not a big deal. She said, oh, John, you forgot that you, you, you left the light on. And then it eventually it became after a few years, John, you left the light on again. <laughs> now, why did it become such a bigger deal? because she'd asked so many times. And because she asked so many times, her brain does this little thing inside, because we're all a little crazy, right? A little overreactive. <laughs> and so the brain goes in there and it shifts the meaning of, if he doesn't turn out the light, that means he doesn't love me. If he can't do a little thing for me, how can I trust him to do a big thing? Now, of course, for men, it's just the opposite. The little stuff's not important, it's the big stuff. So if she's getting upset over little stuff, in his mind, he goes, my gosh, if she gets overset over little stuff, what if I make a big mistake? I'll never be forgiven. And also he feels 
see for men it's like if we do the big stuff in our mind the big stuff i'm monogamous i'm married i'm, I'm kind to you i gave you that nice present i did this that's big stuff right if i do big stuff that should mean little stuff is acceptable that's how men think women think well you did the big stuff but you still did the little stuff <laughs> and they think <laughs> complaining about the little stuff i'm not complaining about the big stuff so you should feel appreciated that i only have little stuff to complain about well, I finally figured that out in my marriage, which is when she complained about little stuff, instead of being offended by it, I went, you know, I'm such a good husband. There's only little things to complain about. <laughs> I just changed my mind on all that, but still. So she would she would complain about, I'd leave the light on. Finally, she figured men out. She, I learned so much about men by my wife figuring me out and figuring out what to say and do to get me to be a better man, a better husband. And so she, she said one day, she, instead of looking at me with disapproval saying you forgot again and then waiting for me to apologize and of course for me to apologize for not turning out a light is stupid okay period it's not a big deal i apologize for big stuff you know like i'm two hours late for dinner i am so sorry i'm your slave for a week okay <laughs> whatever you know i'll make it up to you is what i'm saying but leaving the light on not a big deal that's why i i forget to do it you don't get paid a lot of money for turning out lights okay or little stuff <laughs> It's just the way I work. Okay, so she got it and stopped taking it personally and realized, but how could I get him to turn that light out? And so she said to me one day and took three times what, what she did. And from that day on, I always turn out the light. It changed me. And what it was is she looked in the kitchen while I was in there eating something. And she said, oh, John. And she was happy to see me. Anytime you're happy to see a man, you get his full attention. Hey, John, a big smile on her face. She says, I just want you to know, I've noticed that you've been turning the lights out more oh. often. And I really appreciate that. Sometimes you still forget, and I, but I love it when you remember. And then she disappeared. That was it, just a positive message. It stuck inside of me. And then I forgot. And then another time she came in, did the same thing. And she did the same thing. From that point on, she never had to do it again. Wow. And even today, when I turn out that light, I'm thinking about her with love in my heart. You see, oh. men remember positive messages. Men forget negative messages. Oh. So if you complain to a man, whatever you complain about, he'll forget it. Because why is it, anything. you know, what men often do, which don't take personally, it's just how they deal with stress is when things are a problem and you can't solve it, forget it. Don't worry about it. No big deal. And some people will say, oh, that's terrible. That's denial. I said, no, it'll be denial for a woman. But it's for men good therapy and where did that therapy start buddhism hinduism meditation being present the modern version of, of buddhism is everybody should be in present be present be present if you're present there's nothing to complain about you're alive you're right here so don't go to the past so it's like forget it is a beautiful thing it's built into men's wiring and of course now it's not it's all being changed now as we're feminizing men because the guy could be upset. What does the woman do? Well, what's bothering you? You need to talk about it. My therapist says you should talk about these things. <laughs> Otherwise, you're repressing it. Oh, you're emotionally unavailable. No, he's not emotionally unavailable. <laughs> he needs his time to stop talking, to stop thinking about it. And his body will start That's building testosterone up again. Yeah. Silence is the answer for men. Talking is the answer for women. Mm -hmm. And there's times, of course, if I'm not if I'm not trying to cope with stress, then I want to talk a lot, not a problem. And women don't have to talk all the time. But if you're stressed, you're a woman, your biology has adjusted it. It's out of balance. Stress is you're out of balance from your happy state. Your stress state has a function. It gets you out of this situation, whatever. You know, yes. makes your blood pump better. Your circulation is stronger. Blood pressure goes up, more muscular movement. You know, a lot of different things happen when you're stressed for survival. So you're in survival mode. You're not in make love mode. It's a whole different set of hormones. And that's what we want is to bring back those romantic feelings. I love that. So much insight. And um, one of the things we touched on earlier, and it did come from a viewer that I have. And this question was um, about, if you've been hurt several times in a relationship, as you said, maybe you've had many relationships that haven't worked, you've had pain from all of them. And how is it that we can retrust again to find ourselves getting in that relationship and being able to, um, you know, one of the things you mentioned was about going in there, perhaps being defensive if you've had all of those bad experiences. What can she do to perhaps, you know, try and open her heart more and, 
gain that trust and how much of that responsibility is also on the man that's coming in to her life. Well, that's a wonderful way to look at it. Now, first of all, I, I liked how you set up that question, which is if she's been hurt many times before. It's just kind of logical, isn't it? That if you've been hurt many times before that you'll be a little more sensitive. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that looks like what happened before. That looks like what happened before. Why men are from Mars, the ideas, just the ideas are so powerful. Just to understand men is because whether you're a, a, a dysfunctional man or a functional man, certain behaviors will be the same. And these be behaviors, which are the same is when men are stressed, they need to detach, mm -hmm. they withdraw. So let's yeah. say you're in a relationship okay. with a man who was detaching and withdrawing but you didn't know this. So you started having a big conversation with him. Like, how can you pull away? And why would you do this? And you don't love yes. me. And of course you get him talking because you're asking him questions. And as soon as a man who's upset starts talking he will become more upset and lose control and become very dysfunctional. Now, some men are just already that way when you meet them. But the point I'm making here is that you meet a functional guy and he starts to get a little upset, he'll pull away and then he'll want to spend some alone time. And that doesn't mean that he's not a good guy. That's right. Doesn't mean he's not a good guy. He had the same behavior that you don't understand. You see, when we don't understand things, we put a big warning, warning. But if you had a husband, a father, for example, who would detach and then come back and be all loving and they never argued and fought, then you know that men come and go, men come and go, they withdraw and then they come back. You know, I talk about that in Men Are From Mars as the rubber band. Men pull away and then they spring back and they pull mm -hmm. away and they spring back. And some men pull away more and spring back. Some men pull away only when they're stressed. Some men pull away, and this is very interesting. Some men pull away after you've had a really good time together. Uh, this very is interesting. And, you know, it, yeah. you spend this, you have this understand. Yeah, you have this whole wonderful weekend together, and now he disappears. He, he's because he just feel like I won the race. You know, I just accomplished everything. You know, now I can go do what I need to do for me because we love being there for you. You have no idea how much we adjust ourselves to please you. Look at yourself, how you adjust yourself to please us. We do that as well. You shouldn't do that. And we should do that. <laughs> but then we, we have a mechanism. You see, we have a mechanism inside that women generally don't have. And that mechanism, whether you're trained or not, is when we're close to you, we give up ourself. We're happy to you know, sacrifice for you as long as there's a reward. You see, women go, what? A men are selfish. I go, think for a moment. Who went to the battle and died for his family? Who goes into the ditches and doesn't complain? Who goes to those construction jobs and risks their life and sit with jackhammers and all that crazy stuff? You know, who, who does those jobs? Who now that the nerds who sit on the computer, there's no life at all. They'll just sit on that computer making money. Part of the thing, one of the things I learned during the COVID time was stock market stuff. So here I am doing stock market stuff, shorting. You make a lot of money. I made a ton of money knowing how to short stocks, watch them do the whole thing. And I'd have to spend six hours looking at a computer screen <laughs> doing me money making. It was the most, it Hello. sapped all the life force out of me. Mm -hmm. But men are happy to do it if it's going to make money because money will provide <laughs> for a family, for their wives and so forth. Having said all that, I just, that's a little defense of men. <laughs> We're not these selfish creatures, but we become selfish if what we do is not rewarded. That's why women can transform a man by starting where he is and learning how to accept him as he is, ask for more in small increments, in small increments. And asking for more is very important. You, he can't give you more unless you ask for more. He's not going to do more. Yes. Okay, get that. You don't ever try to get a man to do more except in small increments as a request that would make your life better, but being sensitive to not trying to change him, but letting him figure out what he can do to provide that fulfillment for you. So that means learning how to ask for help. And so many women basically, <laughs> very paradoxical, she goes, well, if he loves me, I shouldn't have to ask. Yeah, very common. It's yep. so common. And, and underneath that, is if he loves me, I shouldn't have to ask why, because he knows what I need and he doesn't do it for me. But you see, you have to go below and you have to realize he doesn't know. And if he didn't, exactly. if he did it once, he doesn't know to do it again. Mm -hmm. He thinks, okay, I did that. It's kind of like I wrote Men Are From Mars. 
I don't really have to write any more books. I'm still living on the royalties of that. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> but but because I get so much appreciation and because my publishers will continue saying, write another book, we'll pay you. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and I'll sit down and write a book. Oh, I'm not going to write a book. It's hard work. But now I don't need the money, but I, 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 I write books and I do online courses and all that because it helps people. There's See, ultimately getting paid means mm. I did a good job. I helped you. Mm. It, it's kind yes. of a reassurance that you're on the right track, that you're doing what you're here to do. Now, women certainly can enjoy that. But more importantly, women need is the reassurance that she's special. She yeah. needs the reassurance that she's number one. And this, this helps to relax mm. the primitive part of her brain so she can have more orgasms. This is real stuff. She can't. If she's feeling afraid, she can't have those orgasms unless in certain, there's certain cases where, you know, women are, have been wounded in their childhood and then it reverses. And when you have the absent father, a part of yes. your brain goes that if I can be, if I'm with a man who's absent, like my father, I can get his love by being sexual. So a lot of women, sometimes they come uh -huh. to me and they say, you know, why is it that the men that are attracted to me are actually the men I'm attracted to, they could be or could not be, but the men I'm attracted to only want to be with me for one night and then it's, they never call back. You know, what's the deal there? Wow. And if it's a consistent pattern or it's not even the one night stand, I get married to guys. So some women have been married many times that are emotionally unavailable for her. why is that? And some women fall in love with, get sexually turned on by a man who's already in a relationship and who's already married. And, and it's as if the more the man is unavailable, the hotter she feels towards him. This is not all women, okay? This is some women <laughs> are that way. You know, you see a guy who's clearly a drug addict, he's dangerous, he's got symbols all over his body saying mm -hmm. he's dangerous, don't mess with me. And she gets all excited because there's always the, the to be aroused, there's, and women, there's safety and then there's the flip side of that, which is I'm safe if I submit myself to him. So yeah. if I give give up, if I give up myself for him, then I'll be safe. And sexuality tends to come up at that point towards him, uh, which is I, I call it your father's stuff. You've got daddy issues, issues. when you're when you're turned on to a man who doesn't love you, who doesn't even know you, and it, it, and to the extent that you can be turned on to strangers if you're a woman you have daddy issues because if you don't have daddy issues, what happens, you're not turned on to strangers. You get turned on. The more a man knows you, the more naked you can become in your mind. And he knows you and embraces you, appreciates you, respects you. And then you can reveal your heart, which is what you feel, what you think, what your wishes are and mm -hmm. ask for help and feeling safe to be emotionally available to him. Then you will be super orgasmic. Then you will be physically naked with him. So you don't just go out to strangers and get mm -hmm. naked, although some women do because they feel so insecure, so unworthy deep inside themselves. They have to use their uh, sexuality to get men's attention because it does get our attention. attention. Why, why does it get our attention? Because we have this monkey brain that controls the instinctive brain, which is where sex is controlled by. So erections come from there. Now, if you're a monkey, just look at a monkey. If, if, if a female wants to have sex with you, your testosterone goes up. That's it. That's why porn is so big because the monkey brain doesn't know that these rim, women are really not interested in you at all. <laughs> and they, they, they don't want to be with you. They're just doing their job. They don't even know who you are. But it looks it, to the monkey brain, if they're undressing and they're showing their butt, which is what the breasts are as well, which is when you show the cleavage, you're actually showing it, it's, it's subconsciously, it's a monkey showing her butt. Because when a woman goes into, <laughs> when she goes into heat, her butt swells up and she sticks it in his face and then he gets all excited. Mm -hmm. This is what's going on all the time with all this. You, you know that you're in a healthy relationship when you, you, your attraction to a man increases as he gets to know you. Now, the big mistake okay. women make on dating is they, they know that if he is interested in me, I will become more interested in him. I will mm -hmm. open up to him because you have that experience in your own experience as a woman, you make the mistake of thinking he's the same. He's not mm -hmm. the more interested in you, the more interested you are in him, the less interested he's going to be in you. The more interested you are in him, 
the more interesting he's going to think he is. <laughs> you train <laughs> him to think of himself. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is give him a chance to get to know you. And if, if the compatibility is there, bang, it happens. It can't happen if you're just giving to him. Mm -hmm. Now, he will like you. Mm -hmm. If you if you're really interested in him, he'll like you. That's nice. Yeah. It won't last. Uh, you know, he's not. He didn't know who you are yet. Why would he be interested in you? You have to reveal who you are, and you want to reveal in the different interests that you have and so forth. That's all fine or similar interests, but more importantly is where you're coming from. Are you coming from a place which is mistrusting him or giving him a chance? And uh -huh being open to receive what he has to offer. Let me see, let me see. That's not mistrusting. It's just like I'm a, I'm a rose and it opens one petal at a time. I yes. don't just give myself to someone. So, you know, you can hear, I'm very, very much in touch with, look, if you're looking for a long-term relationship, then go slow in the beginning, women, before you get naked with him, get mentally open, get right. mentally naked, right. get emotionally naked with him. Then if he's still turned on to you, <laughs> you've got to find, you've got to find, because most men... If, if they don't know who you are and they don't know your emotional vulnerabilities, they'll have sex with you, they'll enjoy it, and then they'll be less interested in you. And there was a cartoon I saw once, which is said, a woman's asking the expert, is it true that I have sex right away with a man, he'll be less interested in me? And the expert says, well, actually, if you have sex with him right away, uh, he'll, he'll, actually, the question is, I'm sorry, it's somebody else's joke, so I have to remember it again. <laughs> He says, is it true that he won't like me as much if I have sex with him right away? And, and the answer to it is, actually, the truth is he'll like himself more. Because <laughs> he's going to go, uh -huh. I scored. Look what I did. Yeah. But it, it, mm -hmm. biologically, we went back to that rubber band thing. What happens when a man ejaculates is a surge of estrogen goes through his body. And he really, estrogen gives you pleasure. Estrogen gives you love, affection, warmth. Mm -hmm. It's estrogen shoots up, pushing his testosterone down. Now that they're opposite forces. So it's like a seesaw. If estrogen goes way high, his testosterone will tend to go down. Mm -hmm. Now it doesn't have to be. Now, as I've gotten older, estrogen is also wisdom. And, yes, and yes. Uh, I have the wisdom of nothing bothers me anymore. I'm just a loving grandfather to my kids and my, my partner. <laughs> why, why, why waste time having arguments when you can have sex? You know, you, you got to figure this stuff out after many years. And that's why I've written these books. I want to share this wisdom of life is that there's so many blessings around us. It's just us that gets in the way. And, and the dynamic mm -hmm. here is so on a date, women will show a lot of interest in the guy He'll talk a lot and then he'll be yeah. interested in himself. And then you'll feel like you know, he wasn't interested in me at all because he wasn't. You have to present yourself to mm -hmm. him little bits by little bits, little bits. You have to ask for more in relationships and little bits and little bits and little bits and take away all complaints, all criticisms, focus on the positive. You know, what yes. happens is when your hormones are out of balance as a woman, we know that cortisol is being produced. That's a stress hormone. When your estrogen levels are low and your testosterone is high, you can measure this, then your cortisol levels will be elevated. It's just correlation, mm -hmm. but that's what's going on whenever you're stressed out, your estrogen's low, your testosterone's high. Okay. Now, just taking hormones doesn't necessarily change things. Like for example, men, we all know that men have uh, the, the, the libido issue if they have low testosterone. They also, what they don't tell you, but it's known is that a man can't have a heart attack if his testosterone is normal. Okay. Uh, Every man who has a heart attack, his testosterone is, is very, very low. That's the biology of men. Low testosterone, heart attack, low testosterone, stress. Any depressed okay. man has low testosterone. So what do you do if you're mm -hmm. a woman and your husband or boyfriend is depressed? Well, you do the same thing. <laughs> you do the opposite thing that you would do with a woman. With a woman, mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to help you. Tell me what's going on. Let me, let me, is there something I can do to help you? When a man is depressed, you don't help him at all. You get, you can't help him by not trying to help him. Create the space for him to work through it on his own. Don't get him talking about his feelings. Don't pay much attention to his whining and complaining. Mm -hmm. And even on dating, we're talking about dating. Some guys, they've been already, what is the word for it? Uh, the narrative today. I like that phrase. We're getting all <laughs> the narrative. <laughs> it's the culture. 
the culture today has shifted to this very dysfunctional culture that's trying to make men more like women and women more like men, rather than helping men find their female side while alongside of being men. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes. here's an example. I could be very feminine as a man. If I'm crying or I'm getting angry or I'm getting upset, I'm on my, I'm producing estrogen, mm -hmm. but my testosterone's going down. If you are crying and I hold you in my arms and say, I understand, I'm here for you, I'm there, tell me more, what else? And I'm there for you. I'm there for you as a Buddha, as detached from my own issues, and I'm there feeling your issues. So my estrogen is high and my testosterone is high at the same time. See, that's the, that's the power of relationships. I can't go, men can't go to their female side unless they've got a female to be their female side. And then he can be his masculine side. Same thing happens in sex, you know, men, if it's somewhat fulfilling, he's attending to your needs. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't know your needs, then he won't. Women often say, you say men just want to make women happy. That's right. But why doesn't he do that? He doesn't know how, and you don't know how to be in a state where he can make be successful. It like in sex, every woman's body is different in sex and it changes every week. You know, it's just like the mood changes things, how much hormone she's got, what's going to go on, it's going to affect her. Is she producing more progesterone then or more estrogen then? What's the orgasm going to be like? You know, how long does it take to get to the orgasm? What do you do to get her to the orgasm? What, what's the whole point of the whole thing? So men aren't taught that. Women aren't taught that. You know, women to a certain extent, they just feel defeated because he doesn't know. We're back to that idea. If he loves me, he'll know. And and he doesn't know. And we have to gently communicate to each other. And it's tough. That's why, you know, when it comes to sex, I like to talk for a little bit about sex because that's what it's all about. Bottom line, physical attraction and love. Those two things, love, sex, money. <laughs> Let's throw that in. <laughs> love, sex, money, and good health. That's life, you know? <laughs> anyway, so I guess success is in there too, but that's more like money. But the, the bottom line here, I wrote a book called Mars, Venus in the Bedroom. Once you're in a relationship, oh, here's a fun book to read. Let's read it together. Every chapter is like, allows you to sort of make a little noise. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I like that. Oh, we could try that. Yeah. And, and, and my ideas are not like toys. Okay. I know everybody's into toys and they're so not real or watching porn. It's so not real. It just takes you further into illusion land. A little bit of role playing if you're both playing a game like you know i'm going to be your doctor or you can be the nurse and you can seduce me that's okay role playing but the, the idea of fantasizing somebody else while your partner's making love to you how are you going to feel as a woman if i said i'm thinking about jane my secretary while i'm having sex with you that i'm fantasizing about that that's not sex that's not making love so we want to be able to yeah, again, I guess I'm uh, a little critical of some of the advice that people have out there around sex and whatever. And also the whole thing of needing other things to manipulate us other than each other. But I understand why, because each other become boring after a while. And the reason sex becomes boring and now you have to intensify, it, intensify, it, and to intensify it because you can't generate that on your own. That's the passion. How do you keep the passion alive? This is what's lost today. And I'm the guy who teaches it. I'm master of it. It's polarity. You see, in the beginning of relationships, you don't need tools, uh, toys and all that because you have the polarity and, and, and you, you have, a, besides polarity, actually, you may not have polarity in the beginning. You have newness, okay? This is a new body. It's a new conquest. It's a new man. It's a new this, you know? It's all newness stimulates dopamine, which raises estrogen in women and raises testosterone in men. And so we perform in our best biologically to make babies. So our sex experience is very, very fulfilling. That's called the honeymoon period. And once familiarity sets in, you don't make enough dopamine to generate those high passionate emotions, those, those high passionate hormones. Well, what can sustain that? Well, I figured it out and, and it just happened because I'm an example of this is polarity. When men can be masculine and women can feel feminine, sex is great. The problem mm -hmm. is you might think that sex was all great in the past. It wasn't, even though men were like men and women were yes. women and so forth. It's because in the past, women weren't balanced in their masculine and feminine energy. You see, when a woman has an orgasm, for example, and to be orgasmic, her estrogen levels have to double, but then her testosterone levels have to rise as well. She's got to be both on her male side and her female side. 
And then she can be multi-orgasmic and she can comp- continue to desire sex. So many women stop mm-hmm. wanting sex uh, mm-hmm. from their partners over time. It's because they're not getting the right stimulation to balance their hormones and sex. And men as well. What, what happens for men in the past is sex, when women stop wanting sex with their husbands, they stop giving sex to their husbands. And so she's just basically accommodating him. And a man can't go to higher levels of testosterone unless he experiences higher levels of estrogen in her. He has to feel, I provide this fulfillment for you. And when he feels that, and this is energetic, this is hormonal, this is smells. Every man's nose has a special nose right up here, two little flaps <laughs> in his nose. And there's one function. It's detecting, is your estrogen level going up or is it going down? Mm-hmm. Wow. If your estrogen levels are going up, blood flows down in my body and gives me, gives me strong attraction and passion and performance and all that good stuff. But it's, that's all regulated by testosterone levels. So he has the testosterone levels but you have to make it, don't take it. If men take testosterone, mm-hmm. they start getting boobs, okay? There's a, <laughs> it, it, the testosterone goes up and it turns into estrogen. They get all angry, they take testosterone. That's why they think testosterone mm-hmm. uh, causes anger in men. You, you give men test too much testosterone, they'll start getting angry and have road rage. No, what happened is too much testosterone, the body turns the testosterone into estrogen. And so it, the solution here is not to take hormones, but to make the hormones. Now I know we've, we've become a culture giving women hormones, right. giving men hormones or whatever. Okay, there's dangers there, but you're still not learning your life lessons, how to make those hormones. And for women who are above menopause, you're not making as much estrogen, but again, you have plenty for your stage of life to be orgasmic. I know women in their 70s who are massively orgasmic, have great, great, because my friends are all in our 70s, so <laughs> they're having great sex. And it's all, it doesn't matter how high your estrogen is, it's that you're making sufficient for that age. You see, when you're before menopause, you, you have to make enough estrogen to make babies. And once you don't have the eggs, you don't need that much estrogen to have orgasms, but you need that, you need a certain amount and what pushes it down from natural and normal is too much testosterone production, too many, too much independence, uh, and in some cases, you know, too much mistrust of men. You see, what happens is you become more independent. One way to become independent is I can't trust you to do it. I asked you to do it, you forgot, so I'll just do it myself. A very familiar phrase to everybody, every woman listening. I'll just do it myself. I'll just do it myself. <laughs> or I'll do it better, so I might as well do it myself. Okay. So all that, all that, I'll do it myself. That's your male side. And so part of being on your female side is patience, learning to ask again, understanding, forgiveness, gratitude for what you do have. Because you see, when you're in hormonal imbalance, because you're producing a stress hormone, they go hand in hand. You have that stress hormones being produced. In some cases, just to be accurate scientifically, you won't be making stress hormones because you're not making any hormones, okay? Because there's something called adrenal burnout. But as long as your adrenal glands mm-hmm. are making enough hormones to, to be alive and, and good, <laughs> then you'll be producing, uh, to have energy is what I meant to say. Because people, a lot of people just have chronic fatigue. Their body, you know, the adrenal glands are just burnt out. They've been so stressed. Mm-hmm. And that's what's happening to women today and for men. Because of this role reversal, we're in a chronic state of stress all the time. That's one way of saying it. Another way of saying it is there are mindset because we believe our illusions. Another way of saying Mm -hmm. it is we've trained our brains. We've literally grown parts of the brain that see problems and the part of our brain that sees solutions, that sees opportunity, that sees goodness has shrunk. Okay, we have shrunken brains as people get older, they become pessimistic because a, a mechanism of survival is that if you're in danger, you need to focus on what's wrong. Now, this is my best dating tip. If you're dating, set up the date so you're not looking for the perfect person. You're not even looking for a marriage partner. If you want to get married, say, all I'm looking for is to create a series of positive dating experiences because you can't have a positive dating experience to a certain extent if you're looking to see, is this marriage material? Is this relationship Mm -hmm. material? Or if you're feeling, if you feel a pressure to have sex with a man, Uh, because there's so much pressure to have sex right away. Is this a guy I would have sex with? This is all crazy thinking. It's like literally coming to my house for dinner and you'll see my beautiful house is very beautiful and you'll be able to enjoy yourself. 
come to my house and you want to buy my house, you suddenly your brain will go into a fight or flight reaction and it will only see what's wrong with the house. Yes. <laughs> this is, and by the way, that same fight or flight reaction occurs inside of men after they have sex and they don't have any heartfelt or mental connection with you. Because you see, mm -hmm. if you have sex right away and he doesn't yet know you in his mind and respect you and feel interested in you and appreciate you, if he doesn't have a sense of empathy and connection to you, some mm -hmm. compassion for you and so forth, he's emotionally connected. If he doesn't have those two centers connected to you, his sex is easy. Men can connect like that. So wow. that's no big deal. A willing partner, okay, I have no discrimination. Just give it to me. So this is, you have to realize if a guy wants to have sex with you, it has nothing to do with whether he wants a relationship with you, whether he thinks you're a good person or not. He's just, that's a part of his brain that has no discrimination at all. So if he wants sex with you, sometimes women think, oh, he might be interested in a relationship with me. Mm -hmm. Because generally speaking, on the bell curve, the majority of women, if they're going to have sex with someone, they already feel like he's relationship material. And, it, you know, it's like for a guy, it's like, okay, I'll just put on blindfolds and do it. <laughs> so just because it never be flattered just because the guy's turned on to you. <laughs> that, that's the worst form of flattery. It should be right. he's interested in you. And I'm telling this for the guys that might be listening. Mm -hmm. Show interest, ask questions, be vulnerable in terms of hearing her vulnerability, not yes. sharing your complaints or your pain, your life. A little bit's always fine. I call it priming the pump for men. If you want to make it safe for a woman to open up, and that's how she'll bond with you and want to bond with you, you first show a little bit, kind of like how women will show a little cleavage and then cover up. You know, the whole idea of the Chinese dress, a slit, which is reminding him there's something in there that might be interesting. <laughs> men, men seduce women by just showing a little bit. You know, I, if I look back, not that I intentionally did it, but, you know, I mentioned my wife, you know, I'd mentioned my wife who's always in my heart. Boom, that showed a little vulnerability inside of me, the, the depth of who I am. And then went back, you don't have to show a whole lot. If you show too much, if you're a man of the vulnerability inside of you, she will yes, become yes. more masculine and be there for you. You want to make it just safe. That's called priming the pump. In the old days, you have a pump that would pump water up. You'd have to put a little water in it and then pump. And then it gives you plenty of water. So you have to create a sense of vulnerability just a little bit. And it makes it safe for her. You can do that also just by showing interest and asking questions and then sharing a little bit about your day and never go deeper in your emotional state than her. You should always be surrounding her. It's about for her. And, and, and women just have to get, out, get, get, be, get permission to be that way because you were not taught to be that way. <laughs> History did not teach you to be that way. We're talking about a higher state of consciousness for women where they want to be independent they have to learn how to be even more feminine okay mm -hmm. see because you're becoming way over your masculine side you need to have a strong female side to know where to come back to okay so it's, it's more challenging for women which is why we have all this new knowledge which is available called therapy therapy has people who don't know what they're feeling learn how to feel what you feel because when you're in touch with your emotions you're producing massive estrogen that's your estrogen friendly guy. Okay. So you're over mm -hmm. here. Now the male side of us is, Hey, don't have any emotions at all. That's why men were taught not to be emotional. That's why men weren't. And by the way, I'm not talking about little boys, little boys and little girls have almost the same amount of estrogen. So mm -hmm. therefore he will have the same kind of emotions. They need the same kind of validation. Mm -hmm. And then at puberty, his testosterone goes up five to 10 times more. And now he's no longer like that little boy and he should not be indulging in his emotions. A lot of mothers want to keep that little boy in there and ask questions and feel coddle him and so forth. Eventually he never wants yeah. to marry a woman. It's too, too constricting, uh, mm -hmm. you know, too claustrophobic. He gets too sensitive to that. So we are different at different stages of life. We are different. You know, I'm in the later stage of life. So, you know, I get to enjoy being full on masculine, full on feminine. You know, I, it's a great time of life to have balanced yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, but unfortunately, most men, their testosterone goes down as they get older. Mine went up, you know, way, way mm -hmm. up. And a, a big part of that, you know, this is not, well, I wanna go into, if I was talking to just men, I'd have more lessons for men. But the most important thing for women is when men pull away, give them space, don't run after them. Give them space. Just give them the space. 
And, and then when he comes back, don't slap his hand because in dating, sometimes it takes a guy three weeks to come back. He might date you and go somebody else with somebody else and he's going to be comparing. And, uh, you know, I really like her. So he calls you back three weeks later after having sex with you. How dare you not call me back the next day? <laughs> the the and, women ask and, the question. Go ahead. You'll ask the question. Uh, I was going to say, is it okay for her to, um, in that nice way, share what it is um, but in that early stage of dating, you know how we've got the ways, the way of how we communicate things, not a hard slap, but just a gentle message. It's no big deal. Is it okay at that stage to share any message like that? If there's something that he's done and perhaps it doesn't suit her, or maybe she's more of a woman who likes to be contacted more regularly throughout that dating time when they're not seeing each other, maybe they're going a week, a week without seeing each other and she wants to be contacted. Is it safe for her to be able to communicate in a positive way that that's what she would like? Always fine to say what you like. It just depends on where you're where you're coming from. Where you're, if okay. you're coming from, I feel hurt. Forget it. All right. This, okay. this, this I feel hurt phrase, it's another damaging awareness from counseling. Okay. This is like the go-to phrase. Oh, I feel hurt. I feel hurt. I feel only six-year-olds feel hurt. Mm-hmm. Okay. Talk to your mother if you're feeling hurt. Talk to your father if you're feeling hurt. Don't tell the man he hurts you. You may okay. feel hurt and you need to realize that's you misinterpreting the behavior and causing yourself to feel hurt. You yes. see, we all have sensitivity and particularly after you've had sex with somebody, uh, you're going to be more vulnerable. Think about, just take a moment to step back and look at couples who are like engaged and they're having sex, lots of sex. They just like oh, goo goo goo, and they look in baby, and I I want to sit next to you. This just just I remember once being on the airplane, and the woman was on one aisle, and the man was on the other, and they were like looking at each other and loving each <laughs> other. That's a natural thing. Where's that coming from? As soon as you start having sex, you're back to being a baby. You see, that's what created you. <laughs> wow. you're, you're back to these very vulnerable, vulnerable, naked feelings. You're naked with this person. It brings up these issues. The issues of feeling not good enough, the feeling of sensitivity, feeling ignored, you're, you're feeling jealous. Why am I not going to get it? Because we don't have any confidence as children. You see, when you're feeling hurt, you're feeling left out. Okay, that's another one. Somebody else is getting what I'm needing, okay, or what I want. You pulled away. It hurts my feelings. That's not his business. Mm -hmm. it, what, what you're doing is saying, you pulled away from me, so now I'm going to pull away from you because I'm no mm. longer loving you. If you're feeling mm. love towards someone, you don't feel hurt by them. <laughs> you feel supported by them. If we just clean this whole thing up, it's such a horrible, horrible message to be telling somebody who loves you or cares about you, or you want to love and care about you, that you're hurt by them. That's your stuff to talk to your therapist about, to talk to your journal about, to pray to God about, release me from blaming people for how I feel and yeah. learn how to take responsibility for how you feel. Nothing wrong, don't misinterpret me. We all get feelings of hurt, okay? We all end up feeling hurt. It's not our partner's business. When we're feeling mm -hmm. hurt, we're overreacting. We're, the, child, the childhood wounds are showing up. So yeah, mm -hmm. let, me, let me give you an example. Let's say I've got under my shirt, I've got this big gaping wound. It's bleeding, but I put a shirt over it. So you don't know there's a wound there. And then I come over and say, hey, John, and somebody taps me in the, ow, that hurts so much, you hurt me. No, I just tapped you. No, the right. partner just tapped you. He pulls away, doesn't call. That's not, you're, you're hurt. That's not about him, that's about you. It's about your own insecurities. It's feeling unworthy, inadequate, but I'm not unworthy, I'm not inadequate. Now you've got all kinds of conflicts going on inside of you. That's not his business. Don't throw your stuff at him, take responsibility for it. But then back mm -hmm. to the practicality, it would be nice, wouldn't it, for him to call you back, give you a little reassurance? That'd be mm -hmm. really nice. So what do you do? You send him, th this is all in a course. I just want to mention that this is big knowledge. As a, yeah. uh, My daughter, Lauren, has written a course called How Do You Get Your Me Time? And because if you, if you want a man to come back to you, you can't be sitting there waiting for him. You have to mm -hmm. be a feel-good woman. You have to be happy yeah. so you're not dependent on a man ever to be happy. Hurt, mm -hmm. is, I depend on you and you're not here for me. So mm -hmm. I'm hurting as opposed yes. to I'm happy and fulfilled and you mm -hmm. have the power to make me happier. Okay, mm -hmm. That's a whole different mindset. If you want 
the ideal in life, which is we're looking forward to that. I'm not in any way saying you're wrong for feeling hurt. You're overly sensitive at that time. And of course okay. you are, you're opening your heart up and then yeah. you're, you're wondering, does he care about me? Does he not care about me? He doesn't call me back. First thing to know is this is a natural tendency for men to pull away and spring back, mm -hmm. but you don't want to lose him. So what you do, you can do, you do text messages. This is such a great thing in the world. One, one she calls the, uh, this is Lauren in her courses. She's brilliant. One is called, and, and that's called at marsvenus.com. You can check out her stuff. She is amazing. What she says, they're SOS messages. And SOS yes. messages, when a guy has pulled away, what you want to do is a sense, remind him you're here and, mm -hmm. and draw him back. Because sometimes men are kind of timeless. Time goes really fast. We don't even know. You know, already we've spoken for an hour and 15 minutes. That's teen, to me, it seems like 10 minutes. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> if they're in the flow of life, you're busy with this, you forget about that. Just because yeah. he forgot about you doesn't mean he doesn't have the potential to think more about you. You have to sort mm -hmm. of show yourself to him in a non-demanding way. So an SOS message is a short little um, uh, uh, email text where you ask him a question or you ask him to do something for you. It basically, it's like, oh, I was thinking about investing in that AO stock. What did you think about that? I just went down. Do you think it's going to go back up? That's it. If he's an investor guy, you might say, oh, you know, my, my battery went out and I was going to call so-and-so, but I'm thinking, do you think I just put up the money and, and buy a new battery? You know, just some little, little question that he has, a, <laughs> that he can just get back to you. You're just giving him the message that you're still open to him. He's not punished for not calling you at the day after or a week later or two weeks later right. or three months later, even you can always send an SOS three months later. <laughs> you know, I remember one woman told me the story of a guy who he was, he, his wife, he, he divorced his wife and he wanted to pursue her. And she said, well, you've just divorced, call me in three months, you know? And so three months later, she just sent a little SOS message. He got back wow. to her, they got married. You see, it's just, he just uh, needs to know I'm not amazing. a bad guy for not getting back to you because our wonderful mm -hmm. culture says men are bad because they don't call women back or they don't necessarily know or feel the interest to continue growing. It takes time mm -hmm. to, to, to be in an intimate, positive relationship. And women, you're the masters of the relationship. You instinctively know something's missing that men don't have that awareness. And mm -hmm. so then you complain rather or get needy and by the way neediness becomes a manipulative aspect and it reinforces itself let me explain this you see we're ruled by a monkey brain which is conditioned very easily so if i'm a monkey and i don't know the communication skills i don't have communication right except a bunch of noises and you step on my foot i go ow and then you step on my foot again i go ow ow <laughs> and i get louder and louder that's neediness is i have to like you know, some women, they punish their husbands by just being unhappy. So you, <laughs> you know, oh. you're making yourself unhappy so that you can get what you want or get punishment. This is like, we're all crazy in a certain sense. <laughs> and yet we're brilliant and we're lovable. And we're, we just have this programming that is no longer makes sense for our objectives that we want now. We're, we want to go to a higher level of lasting passion and romance and good communication and a lifetime of love. Nobody ever had that. People, women will say to me, whatever happened to Romeo and Juliet? Where is he? I said, <laughs> Romeo and Juliet had passion. And the day after they married, they died. If they'd been married a couple of years, he'd be yes. cheating on her. <laughs> That's just the way it was. You know, this is, this, women understood that they were not that distressed by it. As long as the man provided for her, it was pretty much the whole situation. Even my mother told me that when I was a little boy growing up, I found out at my father's funeral, there was a woman there who who looked just like my sister. <laughs> said, <laughs> she was from another city. And she said, oh, your father wow. was always so nice to us. He gave me a car. He paid for my education. <laughs> went, oh, that's my sister. So I told my mother about it. My mother said, you know, John, in my day, things were different. You know, if a man made enough money and was responsible for his wife and his family, mm -hmm then he could have some things as long as it was discreet. He would, he could have other responsibilities as long as he was discreet and he took good care of us. And my dad did. I never saw my parents fighting and arguing and they would have sex, but it would be like the, the kind of sex that where you have sex regularly, but the woman is not like she was in the beginning. See, okay. if the woman is like what she was in the beginning, a man will be guaranteed. It's mm -hmm. just that change, men change and women change and men change. And then we all get repressed. We can't be ourselves anymore. 
So, you know, life can't, we can have this, but we really have to get a new set of skills. And I love talking to women because you have the power to do it. You yes. have the motivation to do it. You know, if I was talking about making money, we'd have both men and women. Yes. <laughs> women to, but if we're talking about love and relationships, it's mainly women, not because mm -hmm. men don't care about it. It's just men don't know. It, it, it's not their instinctive thing. They can't make a baby. They're mm -hmm. not a, a source of love. We, you have a, a set of hormones, which is when you're stressed, the love hormone is low. So in order to get out of stress, you need more love. I don't need more love to get out of stress. I need more detachment. I need more success. I need more hard work. I need more sacrifice that gets rewarded. Then my testosterone is at a good level. I'm a fulfilled man. Then to become happier, happier, that's where a woman comes into play for me. So it takes away all neediness. And now that women are wanting to be on their male and female side, they have to focus their neediness on their inner child and be there for their inner child yes. and not to their partner. All this insecurity is none of your partner's business. It's yours mm -hmm. and come to him with love and he will respond back. And even if we're monkeys, if you come to a monkey with love, he'll uh, respond back with love. This is uh, like learning your power. There is so much insight within this interview. Even I've taken away so many great key points at the end. So um, I, I'm really grateful, John. I I will let you go so I can, I'll move on to my next appointment and I'm sure you also are busy today for the rest of your day, but you've just given so much insight today. I really, really appreciate your time and um, I'd love to have you back because I have got some other questions, you know, to, to ask you and to answer for the viewers. Um, so it'd be lovely to have you on again. Uh, Alicia, I'd be very happy to, and I want to thank you because if everybody noticed all, all your questions were based upon something you already <laughs> read in my books or heard me say, and then you let me say it again. So That's it was right. a very easy interview, but also it's such a pleasure for me to have somebody who is so wise interview me and acknowledge my wisdom. So I want to thank you, Alicia, and I'm letting thank everybody you. know you're very lucky to have her as a mentor. I appreciate oh, you. Thank much. you. And I will always remember and say this because I know in your videos you say that what, what you say, if we resonate with that, and if that's something that we can really connect with, then that's something... Um, really special we're on that same level we're connecting we're understanding that and I always feel that when you talk but I always still even though I may hear things repeated I always learn new things every time I listen and that's why I, I like it because I take on those new things I hear it again and then it it sticks with me so um, I'm, I really am grateful you're a and great I, teacher <laughs> uh, thank thank you Alicia and I, I want to mention everybody because I talked about my daughter we do a, a free class for people at marsvenus.com it's called how to get everything you want in relationships and when she teams up with me I finish all my points I know today if I look back there are a few stories I didn't finish and if you're frustrated I understand <laughs> but but you got a good piece a lot a lot a lot of good stuff came through uh, Alicia asked me to give shorter answers so I, I tried very hard my daughter, it disciplines me even more. No, dad, you use too many words. Get to the point, get to the point. She, she's <laughs> my director, which makes Love me much better. Uh, anyway, a pleasure to be with you. I look forward to Thank doing you. it again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> All right.